looking at a drop of water on a coral reef reinforces how biologically diverse tropical coastal ecosystems are. Within a drop like this, there are literally hundreds of species, many of which are referred to as animal-like protists. These single-celled organisms include groups such as ciliates and dinoflagellates and can be both heterotrophic and phototrophic at any one point in time. Now during evolution, single-celled organisms began to live in colonies and eventually form loose tissues in which the cells making up a colony were in close contact and communication with each other. Sponges are an ancient reminder of this evolutionary step which eventually led to full-blown multicellular organisms. Sponges are fascinating creatures in their own right. Primarily filter feeders, sponges draw water through their porous colonies and filter out tiny pieces of food. Some sponges can play an important role in decalcification. This sponge is called Cleona and has the ability to drill into the skeletons of both dead and living coral colonies. In doing so, the sponge removes large amounts of reef calcium carbonate, representing a potent force in terms of the carbonate balance of coral reefs, which we will consider in a later lecture. The next group of organisms which belong to the animal kingdom belong to the phylum Cnidaria. This is a group of organisms that includes organisms such as jellyfish, hydroids, corals and sea anemones. They are important particle feeders and in some cases carnivores in tropical coastal ecosystems, trapping small particles and prey using their tentacles and later digesting them in their simple gastrovascular cavities. In many cases, cnidarians form mutualistic symbioses with dinoflagellates. We will be hearing much more about this symbiosis and its importance in later lectures. Tenophores are referred to as comb jellies and may be confused with jellyfish. However, they are not jellyfish. Rather, they are gelatinous organisms which are distinct from cnidarians in that they don't have true stinging cells. Many other organisms eat tenophores and they form an important part of the connectivity between reef systems and can occur in very large numbers in tropical waters. They are also the favourite diets of marine turtles and other planktivores. Another group that you'll see within tropical coastal ecosystems are bryozoans or ectoprops. These organisms form encrusting colonies and sometimes delicate lace-like structures where thousands of individuals are working together to form these tiny colonies. Bryozoans are an ancient group, but they show an increasing level of complexity when compared to cnidarians and tenophores. Although they do not have respiratory organs, blood vessels or even a heart, they show an increasing level of complexity in terms of the organs and tissues that they have in their bodies. They are, however, small in size, which is a result of the limitations of diffusing oxygen in and carbon dioxide and waste products out. The next group we'll consider are the worms. There are a large number of organisms which go by the name of worm. This term is largely non-taxonomic and has been applied to any animal that is long and thin and which does not have a well-developed head region. The first group of worms that we'll consider here are the flatworms or the animals that belong to the phylum Platyhelminthes. Like cnidarians, flatworms have a simple sac for a gut, no specialised respiratory or circulatory systems. Some flatworms are parasitic while others are active predators on the reef. Now many flatworms are also brightly coloured and this is because they're trying to advertise their distastefulness to predators such as fish. Many of these flatworms actually have toxic compounds in their tissues. The next group of worms are the ribbon worms or nemertians. The nemertians are a group that has a well-developed digestive system, a primitive blood vascular system, and which can become quite large, especially in cold water such as those associated with Antarctica. In tropical coastal ecosystems, they're found underneath rocks or in mud or between gravel where they derive nutrition from a range of different sources, with many species being carnivores, filter feeders and detritivores. 
Take the following quiz to check your knowledge of the lower invertebrate organisms that we've been discussing.